Uh, thank you very much, Fanta. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the participants under the spelling bee category. So we're going to call all of them, but right now I'm going to introduce those under the spelling bee category. Please put your hands together for Amanda Jane Sandy. Amanda Jane Sandy. Bintu Kanute. Babu Karjalo. Fatmata Mbai. Fatmata Kasama. Kausu Cham. Mansur Njai. Maria Majame. Ndei Maram Jaju. And Osman A.K. Silla. A round of applause for them, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, on the public speaking, please put your hands together for Binta Siro Jarama, Fatima G. Ture, Aisha Bori Ture, Karja Tumane, Mami O. Jaya, Maria Majalo, Maria Tujum, Nima Jawara, Sehu A. B. Bari, Sheikh Jijan Bob, and Matida Baro. A round of applause for all the participants. Nice, nice. Here they are. So we are wishing you all the very best. Very soon the judges will be seated right there. And you will come here and you will do your best, okay? But well, make sure, don't panic. Make sure you just enjoy yourself and deliver. Is that okay? Do you understand? If you understand, say, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, that's very low. I want you to scream because, you know, I cannot really hear. Say, yeah. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for all our participants. They are ready. They are ready indeed. At this juncture, we'd like to call on Mr. Omar Sise. And ladies and gentlemen, please, uh, I think I must draw your attention to something. We're about to do the spelling bee. And in order for the participants to hear the questions, we need to remain silent. And if you know how to spell a word, we are all smart. If you know how to spell a word, just keep it to yourself. Grade four. So you're supposed to pick a number from the grade four category. Amanda, the word you're supposed to spell is hooves. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. You may take your seat, Amanda. <laughs> Hooves was what you were asked to spell. H-O-O-V-E-S. Contestant number two, please. Bintu Kanute. Number 41. Square. S U A R. That is correct. <laughs> Contestant three. Bubakar Jada. Number 68. Hiccups. That is correct. <laughs> Contestant number four, Fatmata M. Bay. Great. Number 90. Your word is mountain. M O U N T A I N. That is correct. <laughs> number five, Fatmata Kasama. Grade eight. Your word is rheumatic. R H E U M A T I C. That is correct. <laughs> Contestant number six, Kausu Chan. Your word is servitude. Servitude. S E R V I T U D E. Servitude. That is correct. <laughs> Contestant number seven, Mansur Njai. 
grade six, charismatic, having, exhibiting, or based on charisma or charism, of relating to or constituting charisma or charism. C H A R I S M A T I C. That is correct. Number eight, Mariana Jamme. Number sixteen, Studio. S T U D I O. That is correct. <laughs> Contestant number nine, Ney Maram Jaju, Grade Seven. Inconceivable. That is correct. Contestant number 10, grade two. Your word is shopping. That is correct. That marks the end of round one. Um, thank you so much. Um, so the, that's it for the first round. We now head to the um, second round. We have uh, nine uh, uh, participants who are making it to the second round. Round two. Can we have Miss Bintu, please? Number eight. Your word is laundry. That is correct. Bubakar Jala, grade four, number 97. Nonsense. Time is up. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Nonsense. N-O-N-S-E-N-S-E. Fatumata M by grade three. Number 62, Chamber. C-H-A-M-B-E-R. That is correct. <laughs> Fatumata Kasama, grade eight. Functionary. That is correct. Next contestant, please. Number 88. Raven. Can you please give me a definition? Raven. A small, narrow, steep-sided valley that is larger than a gully and smaller than a canyon and that is usually worn by running water. Raven. Raven. R-A-V-I-N-G. Raven. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. R-A-V-I-N-E. Number seven, Mansoor Jai. Great six. Seventy-three. Zodiac. Z O D I A C. That is correct. <laughs> Mariama Jamme, grade four. Number thirty-three. Veins. Vein. V A I N. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. <laughs> they Maram Jaju, grade seven. Thirty-four. Your word is bedlam. B -E -E -N -A -M. That is correct. <laughs> Usman A. K. Silla. Beehive. B -E -E -H -I -V -E. That is correct. 
Thank you so much. Um, that's the end of the second round. So we go to the third round now. And when you pick a word, just a reminder, and this is a friendly reminder, perhaps not one that's supposed to come from the judge. Contestant, Bintu Kanote. Your word is far-fetched. That is correct. <laughs> Fat matter M by number eleven. Monkeys. M O N K E Y S. That is correct. Fat matter Kasama. Yeah. Biographical. Pilgrimages. P I L G R I M A G E S. That is correct. Mariama Jamme, sixty seven. Affectionately. Number 50. Your word is mansion. M A N T I O N. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Um, thank you so much, uh, and thank you to the, the participants. Um, it looks like we've come to the um, end of the, uh, the spelling bee competition. We were looking for five um, spellers or uh, participants to make it to the final. Congratulations for making it to the final. Congratulations, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to move now to the second category. And the second category is one of my favorite categories, and that is the public speaking category. So your five minutes starts now, Binta. The floor is all yours. Good evening, everyone. My name is Binta Siro Jarima, and my speech will focus on sexual violence against women. I will first define what sexual violence means. Sexual violence is when someone forcefully induces or manipulates someone even into unwanted sexual activity. Forms of sexual violence include, but not limited to rape, child sexual assault, and incest, intimate, partner, sexual assault, harassment, etc. Cases of sexual violence are usually without the consent of the victim, while anyone can undergo sexual abuse. Women are gravely affected, seeing every form of sexual abuse. They go through on a daily basis and still being afraid, speaking up, breaking my heart. The sad reality is that a lot of these abuses that occur women are perpetrated by people. They have close affiliations, such as family members or trusted individuals. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll be surprised to know by the age of 18, two in four girls will be victims of sexual abuse. At some times in their life, four in six women will experience an attempted or complete rape, more than half of which took part before they reached 18 years, against about 40% sexually abused in the homes of the victim. Imagine raping of an innocent young girl. 
Imagine living of an innocent young girl or initiate in, in, the life, in the life of the victim. I thank you all for your kind attention. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Binta Siro Jadama. And you talked about um, sexual abuse in our society. And uh, now I just have this um, one question for you. What do you think um, leads to sexual abuse in our society? By going out nakedly. By going out nakedly. Who? That causes, what? Who goes out nakedly? Naked? Like, yeah. Who? who? Girls or boys? It causes sexual violence okay. in our society. Okay. When putting on things that you know that it will attract men to come over you. All right, thank you so much, Binta, and have a good night to Abdelaisi. I greet you all. My name is Fatima G. Ture, and my speech is entitled Corruption. Corruption, by definition, is an act of dishonesty by those in position of powers, such as managers and public officials. Corruption includes giving or accepting of bribes, or inappropriate gifts, double dealing under the table transaction, manipulating election, diverting of funds. Corruption is a cancer that continues to hinder the progress and economic growth of many countries, especially African countries. We have seen how incident of corruption has been reported in the mainstream media, and yet nothing comes out of it. Currently, senior government are even the most corrupt and their corrupt activities are not hiding anymore. It is important for every Gambian to understand that we cannot take this country to the next level until we are able to make a deliberate decision to collectively fight against corrupt practices. Critical question you might want to ponder on you as you sit here are, how did you win that contract? How did you get that job? How did you acquire your driver's license? And how did you always find yourself? At the top of every undertaking, why did you create fake ID numbers and names to fill a transport reform spreadsheet, knowing fully well that those names doesn't show up for the project? We owe it our country. We must not fail her. Just as sad as I am about everything going on, and I am hopeful that we will discover the way someday. No giving up. I thank you all for your wonderful time. My question is, why did you speak um, on this topic? Why did you choose this topic? Because senior government become rich within few months of their employ. So that is the main case why I say, why I speak. I am Aisha Budi Ture and I'm here to talk about gender equality. European Institute for Gender Equality recognized gender equality in this perspective that Equality does not mean both men and women will become the same, but their women's rights, responsibilities, and opportunities will not depend on whether they are born female or male. Gender equality is not a women's issue, but should concern and fully engage men as well as women. I can safely say not a single country today has achieved gender equality. No country can say they put the same footing for both men and women to be free from all forms of prejudice and stereotypes. Gender inequality exists in our society today. No matter how much you try to dismiss it or deny it, don't believe me or face the fact. There has been an improvement. Yes, that is true. But those improvements are just baby steps in cross-country race. UNESCO has determined over 130 million girls are out of school by 2020, and out of the world illiterates, two thirds of them are women. There are numerous reasons behind this. For example, Poor sanitation facilities, lack of funding, war and disabilities, but above all, it is simply because we are born as a girl. Being born as a girl in many countries is a death sentence. Innocent girls are murdered in cold blood inside the room before they have the chance to witness the light of the day. Girls are made women of way too early, force a girl to go through early pregnancy and then suffer the domestic violence. I know women and girls are the disproportionate victims of human trafficking as they make up. 71% of these inhumane practices. Most of us here may have been fortunate enough never to experience these issues that I've just mentioned, 
But that doesn't mean a gender inequality does not affect us all. Many women around the world are restricted by the glass ceiling in their workplaces. The invisible barrier that prevents them from climbing the ladder, the pay gap between men and women goes large. Violence against women such as rape and sexual assaults are things we all are too familiar with from the newspapers. We, I mean we, cannot move forward into the future together if half of us have been held back. I conclude. Thank you. I just want briefly you to tell me um, how you think, because you've mentioned young girls being the most, the, well, the, 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 uh, the victims in most circumstances. How do you think young girls growing up can, you know, um, bridge the inequality gap, use their, um, their powers, you said, to bridge the inequality gap? Girls should fight against female genital mutilation. Thank you. That's a very good part. Thank you. Our able judges, dignified sponsors, parents and guardians, ladies and gentlemen, I greet you all. It is a great sadness we are in 2021 talking about gender-based violence, which is my topic today. Gender-based violence is deeply rooted and continues to be one of the most notable human rights violations within all societies. It is a violence directed to a person based on their gender and are rooted in power inequalities between women and men. On the 3rd February 2013, we woke up with a horrific story of a 17-year-old girl who was gangrel with her abdomen split up in a construction site in South Africa. In January 2018, Jordan Petrus was found followed, raped and killed in a limestone factory in Nigeria. Not forgetting our very own Marimendi, a diligent young lady whose dream was to live as we left and become a role model for many. But this dream was short lived as she was allegedly raped and killed with her private parts cut off in her own home. The these are among many stories of how women continue to be violated in our streets and homes daily. At this juncture, let's observe one minute silence for Marimendi and other young women that suffered gender-based violence. Violence and discrimination against girls are unacceptable and punishable by the law. And we must see opposite in gender as human, and they are equals to in gender-based violence. Moreover, justice system must be acceptable and responsive to, cri to criminals and civil matters relating to gender-based violence. And the police should swiftly respond to gender-based violence and ensure culprits are brought to justice. Finally, we must all intensify our advocacy efforts to speak against gender-based violence regardless of who is involved. That is the punctual for change. Thank you all for your wonderful time attention spoken extensively on gender-based violence and so if I want to ask you now to address the many young girls in this room to advise them on gender-based violence what would you tell them what would you be what would be your word this evening I would like to advise everybody that mm. one thing I want to make sure that is clear mm. violence is not only is not only on women but are also on men because you see some, some women harassing their husband. So that is what I want to make. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good evening to you all. My name is Mami Ojaya, and my speech is centered on COVID-19 with focus on vaccination. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2019, COVID-19 took the world by storm and claimed millions of lives globally. In the Gambia, it was the most painful yet a helpless situation for many people. It exposes the loopholes of our weak healthcare system, the level of poverty and the extent of inequities that exist in our country. Today, this virus continues to spread too much in the world and claiming thousands of lives daily. COVID-19 is caused by a disease called SARS-CoV-2 and it was emerged in November 2019. Coronavirus can be spread by droplets and virus particles released into the air 
when an infected person talks, laughs, sings, coughs, or sneezes. Larger droplets may fall in the ground in fewer seconds, but tiny infectious particles may linger in the air and accumulate in indoor places, especially where people are gathered and there is poor ventilation. This is why mask wearing, hand hygiene, and physical distancing is very essential in preventing the further spread of the COVID-19 and make the universe to return back to normalcy. Fighting the coronavirus is not just attaining the COVID populative cause. It's also ensuring that humanity comes out victorious and everyone has the power to create way in order to stop the pandemic. So as you all leave this hall today, remember to get fascinated. Encourage your friends and loved ones too. You can, you should for humanity. Thank you. For many people who who believe that COVID is not real, it doesn't exist. What would be your message for them? But it is true because it's killing youth, it's killing people in the Gambia and even in the universe. The importance of saving the world's girl, child and improving women's rights has never been more critical. Discrimination against women is rampant and girls are often seen as burdens on their families, resulting in them facing disadvantages in areas of health education, and other aspects of upbringing. Education and awareness can contribute to improving attitudes towards the nation's female population. Every action, no matter how small, can make a difference. Let's explore how you, I, or we, can help spread awareness and disinfect, disinfect the peace of mindset about girl child. Thus, how to facilitate the positive change for girls all around the globe. By speaking up, Encouraging a dialogue with those around you at all levels of society can help spread awareness about the plight of the girl child and orient people on how to revive their attitudes and behaviors towards women. Wherever possible, talk to your peers, friends, families, and employees about how education, opportunities, and unbiased participation can help families and communities progress. By talking, you shall get to the darkest part of the soul of the girl child, unchain it, and set it gleaming. Advantageously, we must collectively encourage the successes of girls in the community. Injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. Injustice against a girl child is equally an injustice against human rights. I conclude. I want to know why is this topic so important to you? That you it is because girls and women are discriminated in the society. They are, the people, men think that maybe, or many people, let me not say men, many people think that maybe a girl doesn't have the voice to speak. And that is not right. That is why this topic is Distinguished personalities, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Maria Tudu, and I will be discussing on maternal mortality in the Gambia. Pajibo survey in 2019-2020, Maternal mortality rate stands at 375 per 1,000 life bar. This is an unacceptable figure, and we must all play our part to end it. Maternal mortality is defined as a death of a woman during pregnancy. Delivery, and within 42 days of delivery, and within 42 days of delivery, excluding deaths that we are due to accident or violence. The causes of maternal mortality include severe bleeding, sometimes called hemorrhage, infection, blood pressure disorders of pregnancy, complication of labor and delivery, lack of access to healthcare facilities, poor road networks, and unsafe abortion. Have we said the causes? It is time we work together for solution. To start with, government must ensure healthcare institutions are equipped with the needed resources to deliver timely and efficient healthcare for the public to save women. Furthermore, healthcare institutions must be held accountable for every life lost, and this will promote accountability and ensure all victims get the needed justice they deserve.
All right. Um, thank you so much, Maria, too. Good evening to you all. My name is Nima Jawara, and I have a speech to share with you entitled Chai Levo. The former president of South Africa, Nelson Mandela, once said, safety and security don't just happen. They are the result of collective consensus and public investment. We own our children, the most vulnerable citizens in our society, alive, free of violence and fear. Good evening, panels of judges, audience. Today I will be talking about child labor and its impact on children. See, this topic may seem simple and straightforward, but to be frank with you, it is not. Most if not all of us are familiar with the term. However, our definition of it falls short of the standard coined by ILO and UNICEF. According to the International Labor Organization, child labor refers to work that is mentally, physically, socially, or morally dangerous and harmful to children, and or interferes with their schooling by depriving them of the opportunity to attend school, obliging them to leave school prematurely, or requiring them to attend combined school attendance with excessively long and heavy work. Now that we know the definition of child labor, I would at this point like to draw your attention to a story. This may seem like a fiction or a fairy tale, but it is not. For it is the story of many children. This story is so what some of our peers are going through across the world. Oh, they are with you, yet they belong not to you. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts, for they have their own thoughts. Thank you for your kind attention. What can you do personally to end um, child labor? How do we do to end child labor? No, I mean you personally, you. Me? Yes. How do I end child labor? Okay. By not, by not giving your daughter or someone's daughter excessively long and heavy work. Thank you. and gentlemen, my name is Yehu A.B. Bari, and my speech title is Peaceful Election. Election is a moment that accords the citizens of a country the opportunity to democratically choose a representative or leader who would steer their affairs. It is one way in which criticized can have their voices heard. A democratic system helps enable different views to be debated within a parliament rather than opponents using force to bring the action they want. Unfortunately, in the last few decades, there has been serious violence before and after elections in some parts of the world. Oftentimes, riots and clashes happen when election process were considered to be unfair by those who had voted for the losing parties. There were often accusations of electoral fraud and rumors which caused reaction from people gathered to hear the result. There have also been leaders in Africa who vowed to be the power forever but ended up in awful situations. The voters are the most powerful and their vote is their weapon. Therefore, I urge the Gambian people to vote for their choice of candidates and abstain from tribalism and violence. The young people are the future and we have a responsibility to set the pace for the next generation. And the only way we could do that is to vote wisely and abstain from violence and destruction. Furthermore, politics of tribe and ethnicity can only divide us further as a nation. Already, tribalism is deeply entrenched in everything we do as a nation, including choosing a representative. We are so focused on what the ethnical or religious affiliation of candidate is, rather than what they have to offer the nation when elected in power. We must do it away from ethnocentric politics. As a responsible people, it must be now or never. You and I have a collective responsibility of enlightening the masses to do it away from politics of tribe, religion, and character. Let the right person do the job. Let the person with a proven track record be given the job. Let the person who's able to justify their words and actions be given the job. Let us elect leaders who will not manipulate us for their selfish gains. Let us instead elect 
of judges and my fellow participants, all protocols respectfully observed. My name is Seti Janbo and I am attending St. Teresa's Upper Business School. I am honored to be standing in front of you today to deliver a short yet thought-provoking speech on quality education. To begin with, it is common saying that education is the key to success. This line is sprinkled in our ears almost every day in our classrooms. Well, honestly, I partly disagree with this. It is my fervent view that quality education with emphasis is the key to success. Education alone does not get you the knowledge, wisdom, and required skills to, co to succeed in this competitive world. Quality education does sadly. In the Gambia, this is a luxury only a few can offer. Sustainable Development Goal 4 recognizes the need to provide quality education for all most especially vulnerable population, including poor children, children living in rural, rural areas, persons with disabilities, indigenous people, and refugee children. The quality of education cannot be overemphasized. The attainment of the global goal hinges more on the quality of education. There cannot be any meaningful development without a good education that aims to bring development in the life of people. National development accord largely on the quality of education being provided to students at schools. There is a strong link between quality education, economics, and social benefits. Education, quality education helps students to acquire life-changing skills and break the cycle of poverty. In the words of Charles Rangel, former U.S. representative, I quote, Quality education grants us the ability to fight the war on ignorance and poverty. End of quote. In the Gambia, stakeholders across the board have worked and continue to work to improve quality education in our schools. Access to education and school enrollment rate have increased exponentially over the years. Although there is a stark improvement in the promotion of education in our schools. In the Gambia, more work still needs to be done to promote education, to improve education, quality of education being provided to students across the Gambia. Let us all stand and demand for a better, for, and demand for more funding in the education sector. For a better Gambia, education must be a topmost priority. Thank you all for your kind attention. Greetings to you all. My name is Tida Barrow. And I am here to give an important message about tribalism. No to tribalism. You see, my people, we can break the cycle of negativity and hatred. Instead of feeling angry and hateful deliberately, why can't we learn to be positive and put our country's interests first? My grandmother once told me, see the barrel, the best way to fight tribalism is to stop talking about it and always distance yourself from the people and places where it's been discussed. I always feel surprised whenever I see or hear someone bragging and saying I am a Mandinka, Jola, Kula, Wolof and so on, which I think could have been done in a more positive way in order not to be little or segregate any tribe. Because, as far as I know, in Gabian culture, all Jolas, Pulas, Mandinkas, Wolofs are all mankind. It doesn't matter the tribe you are, the language you speak, the culture you practice. We all cook Domoda, Benachin, Bahal, and so on. And it's the same people who do gather at our meeting points. For the Gambia ever true, I salute you all. Good day to you all. My name is Agnes Kujab. I'm here to recite a poem entitled You Are Like No One, written by my father. You are like no one. She cannot do anything big without starting small. She cannot reach the top without beginning from the bottom. She cannot appreciate freedom if you do not know bondage. She cannot appreciate wealth 
if you have no experience in poverty. You cannot value success if you have not tasted failure. You cannot appreciate the joy of love if you have not been through the pain of heartbreak. Panel of judges and my fellow contestants, my name is Aji Awasao, and I am here to recite a poem and tell you money, written by Yasin Dao, and here it goes. Money, as a king of the world, he rules the world in different ways. Without it, man is incapable of solving his problems in all walks of life conduct their business with money. It brings happiness, togetherness, and friendship. It sometimes brings enmity, separation, and discrimination. I go by the name Our Kamara, and I am here to recite a poem entitled The Proud African Child, written by myself, and here it goes. I am Kunta. So name Kinte and any man still like a Tonya Sabatindi. See some said victory, but others said still slavery, but others said we need to develop a new system because the system we are living in is totally sick. But it's embodying the morning Hakilo La Baricana Tani Dusola and Kalamutan Defenna because a mandala sita nungatam and tamang or that is at a kono hakilo tata fen to deny. I got to realize it was a dream. In the dream, I saw a young girl who stood beside me, but she, she whispered a word to me that I will never forget in life. Welcome to Africa, the land of culture, art, and music, the land of poetry, praise singing, and prayers, the land of Balafon, Mbala, Alpio Ada, the land of Kora, Koringol Aninke Kendedu, the land of Tama, celebrating Traman Tarwale and many other African legends. The land of drumming, captured in Suraba and Burma Sendeng dances. The land of fine art, captured in angelic paintings, canvas and sketches. Wow, this motherland has its all, and I am the gift, the prize and the magic to remember. But we will not also forget to remember the soldiers of the legends that we were built on. We salute the Nelson Mandela's. The Sado, the Kerabai Jawaras, the Koro Sisis, the Alaji Burrows, the Mam Yasins, the Dr. Ramus, our volunteers, and all the mentor feelers. And in Manding Kekia, no Mulota Africa, Isabarita, Yekuma Jimmy, Ikeleta, Bariman Pisar, within the wombs of creation, climbing through the muds of life. I am from that African culture that is rooted with love. I can't take it anymore. I am hopeless. Helpless, and I'm afraid that I will never get better. Good day to you all. My name is Fan Jalo, and then I am here to recite a poem entitled The Hopeless Child, written by, co written by me and my coach. And here it goes It is sad that I found myself in a society that do not care about me. See, I am that unlucky child. Deep down in me is full of pain. For my insecurities just screaming loud into my head. For my society keep telling me what I cannot do. They planted more seeds of fear and hopelessness in me than courage and confidence. So they terminated and sent my dreams into the depths of the ocean. All they made me see is impossibilities. My abilities are disabled. My hope is muted for I am that hopeless child. I see the innovation, motivation, captivation, and organization that the Gambia we once knew had been led to dislocation, separation, and confusion for our country have to be in a massive reconstruction. See, our societies have to increase, increasing to decrease the disease that is manipulating and conquering our society's development. To build our nation, we have to be wise, civilized, and not to allow stigma hinder our progress. Instead, we should sanitize our actions to fly the nation higher. See, I know to build a nation isn't easy, but I say together we can fight and change that negativity to positivity. Together we enjoy life, put in love and possibilities. Every citizen standing for peace and stability. I mean our nation enjoying peace and stability. No more neutralizing other people's ideas, but instead, we should be eager to serve in building the foundation of Gambia. 
So don't sit an hour after hour thinking about you, but rather thinking of ways to vaccinate the culture from you to hour. Nyung kuole and kampandi, ayan kampandi, kan jiso kandindi, koka mira and diko gambi, and yanta katayatole, nyarata mi manko matasi. They talk about success, 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 sitting in the middle of their bed, eating and sleeping, hoping one day become a successful man. Did you think Ensafal was sitting in the middle of his bed when he became a lawyer? Did you think Nelson Mandela was eating and sleeping in the middle of his bed when he became the first black president of South Africa? If you want to succeed, you're going to work hard, fail, get up, work harder than you did before. All of you are going to be a champion. You are going to be a champion. You are going to be a champion. You are going to be a I'm 
Where is Jax? You don't want to take shots of this or it's, it's fine? It's cool. It's okay. Fine. Can we have you guys move to the side? Move to the side, please. Thank you. For the public speaking. Yes. We have Kadija Tumane. <laughs> Mami Ojaya. Nima Jawara. Sehu Ebi Bari and Matida Baro. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Now you guys, you guys stay in the middle here. You guys stay in the middle. There's meant to be five. Two Ananyan and Tui. Ah, Makena. Matida Sehu Nima, Mami and Kadija Tumane. Is there a guy there as well? Yes, Sehu Ebi Bari. That's Sehu is there. Good. Um, and for the poetry finalist, Sue, sharp, sharp. <laughs> for the poetry finalist, we have our Kamara. Congratulations. Fatima Conte. Fatima Tajalo. Ibrahim Saad. And Safia to Haidara. These are the finalists for poetry. Right. Okay. And for the final category, which is the music and dance, Juliana Taylor. Julie, Julie. Ajaba. Ajaba. Kumba Tuku Sane. Kumba. Eyes on my neck. Eyes on my wrist. Come on. Fatu Bojan. Fatu Bojan. Last but not least, Gany B. Ture. Gany B. Ture, my man. Congratulations. Gany, you did so well. You're my star. Um, congratulations to all of the finalists for every category. You've all done well. Please stand in a straight line so they can move move this way. So Standing in a straight take line now. So proper picture take of pictures. you guys. Yeah, yeah. Whilst we move away to the side. The ugly ones, we move away. Thank you guys so, so very much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. My name is Fatka Sise. I was your female host. And I am Andy Spike. And this was the Kids Got Talent 4.0 edition. Please wait for the finale. We don't know the date yet, but once we do, we will share it with you. Thank you so much for being great, a great, great sport. Thank you for being so supportive.